Hi, are you having problems using Pinterest to direct traffic to your online store or service? If so, your Pinterest trust rating is a big part of your success. Today we're going to show you how to improve your Pinterest trust factor to a point where Pinterest will become your number one marketing tool for your small business. Pinterest is one of the most underutilized marketing tools for small business owners. And it has extremely low barriers to entry. And the best part is, you do not have to spend any advertising dollars to take advantage of this. Pinterest is a trust-based visual search engine. And order of operations and patterns are very important. More, of this, more on this in a couple of minutes. As I had alluded to earlier, Search engines favor users they trust, and each search engine builds its own criteria to evaluate your authority and your trustfulness. Like all search engines, Pinterest reviews many different aspects of your profile and your pin history to build what I call a reputation trust factor. Pinterest methods, although complex in the back end, are not that hard to leverage if you follow a few simple steps. So let's jump over to Pinterest for a quick tutorial. We can walk through these five steps too. So the first thing you gotta look at, and it's very important for this framework to work, is that you have to have your website hosted on a reputable, trusted hosting site. For Maritime Vintage, we actually use Shopify. We have a, an upcoming video that actually deals with the whole setup of the shop on the Shopify platform. But the main thing here is you want a reputable Firm. It can be big commerce, it can be a WordPress hosted on a reputable hosting site, but something that Pinterest knows is a reputable company that has a firm uh, backing behind it. Shopify is in particularly attractive for this type of framework in the fact that it is a partnership company with Pinterest, and I believe from our metrics and analytics we track, it does favor at the upper end of the deck and gives you an advantage over some of the other hosting sites. You can see here we use a basic theme and it's all very modular, very easy to use on the Shopify site. The other important point here around the trusted domain is that you should have your own domain. You can see here at Maritime Vintage we have MaritimeVintage.com. You can have blog sites that you might have like WordPress.777444, but what you really want to do is go out and register your domain. It's not very expensive to do that. You can do it for about $14, $15 a year. Get your domain there, go on to some type of site like Shopify or BigCommerce and set it up. And it really helps improve your trust ratings with uh, Pinterest. The next step to building your trust profile is to then validate your website with Pinterest. To do this, you actually have to go into your Pinterest uh, profile. And underneath the little icon at the top here, you're going to see a settings icon. You're going to go into that, and as you scroll down, you're going to actually see an option here that has the, the website you actually confirmed. So you're going to hit that confirm button. And this is the one technical part of this entire process. It then generates a HTML tag that has to go into your lead in page. Uh, in an upcoming Shopify video, we'll actually show you how to insert this into uh, one of your liquid display pages. But basically, you just need to copy this one line of code into your lead-in landing page of your domain. And then, uh, once that is done, you click Finish, and Pinterest would then try to validate your site. In this case, it's not a real site that I typed in there, so it's going to fail. But that would be the basic steps you have to go through to validate. The next thing you're going to want to do is to optimize your profile uh, attributes. To do this, you go into the Settings tab, and you actually go to Profile, and make sure you fill out everything on this tab. Right? So there's an About You section. You want to keep this uh, as uh, long-tailed keywords is what they call them. You don't want to be using a whole lot of the Twitter-style hashtags. It's more active sentences that you would see in a visual or vocal search. Um, a couple of examples here, your personal home decorator, shopping service, home decorating project ideas from a project manager turned how to project stylist. So, so keep some verbiage there that people would commonly be searching for. Always make sure you put in a location. Uh, you, you 
get, uh, uh, I don't want to say penalized, but you actually get favored if you have a location there because it will bring up uh, pins to people in your areas. So you, you miss a lot of SEO traffic there by not putting in that location tab. You have to look at to quickly raise your trust uh, rating is the quality of your pins. And this is important. There's a lot of misinformation out there regarding uh, pin quality and a lot of people will say is that as you go into your boards you should delete pins that aren't getting traction. So uh, we're going to go in a few minutes we're going to go in and show you how to set up the, the pins and the boards and so forth at, at a high level but, but right now we're focusing on the quality of the links behind the pins. Remember each pin is an advertisement that takes you to a website and Pinterest in most cases 80% of the time it's a blog or an information site that gives you additional information. A lot of people spend a lot of time clearing out the pins that don't work for them. That's not the ideal strategy. That actually hurts you. But what you do want to be clearing out is the pins that have dead links or what they call spam links. These would be people that have X's or, or marks against them from Pinterest for spamming people. A lot of information in the news about drop shippers and spamming people. Pinterest has really cut down on that. and That's why you see demise or, or people moving away from the Pinterest group boards uh, as they were, uh, Pinterest is starting to favor them in the SEO search as it was starting to collect a lot of spam and a lot of those larger boards. Uh, but the two things to look here for quality pins are is that initially when you post a pin, you're, you're going to get zeros in the early stages. Uh, as your board gains experience, you, you'll have some early pins like this one jump up to 21 hits almost instantaneously. But for the most part, you'll get a lot of zeros early on. So for the first two weeks after you post a pin, don't worry if it stays at zero. But once you go down a little bit and look at some of my older pins here, you can actually see there, there's been quite a bit of traction. You've got this one's got 24, this one's got 143, this one's got 4. But what a lot of people will do is they'll focus on these ones here that got 0 and they'll start clearing those out. And that's not a good thing to do with Pinterest. Pinterest has a long lifespan. In a lot of cases, pins will rocket to uh, you know, viral status even four or five, six months after you initially post them. But what you do want to do is you want to actually go into these uh, pins and make sure that they're not dead links or spam links. And if they are a dead link or a spam link, you're going to want to clear that pin out. I've just shown you this link here, and it's actually going to a Photoshop. Now, Pinterest is a little bit unique is in that it really favors a trusted website. If you've got a pin that goes to a trusted known website, it's going to favor that pin and show it to more people. If you've got a pin that goes to a known spammer, or it goes to a dead link, or it goes to just a pinning site like this where there's no active content behind it, Pinterest does not tend to favor those types of pins and you'll see a lot of zeros. Those are the pins you need to clear out. The next step you have to do is go in and actually create your boards within your Pinterest channel. So to do that, you, you go up here and make sure you're on your profile, go over to your boards, and initially you may not have any here, but there's always this option to create a new board. It's, it's actually quite simple click on the option and it's going to bring up once again another area where you've got to choose your name very carefully. So in general the boards you want to have on your channel are boards that support your theme or the purpose of your shop. But we've also been very successful with having supportive boards that although not directly linked to Maritime drive a lot of traffic to our site. I, so for example I have a very popular barbecue board and a very popular landscape landscaping board fits more closely with our maritime vintage theme as we do do garden decor packages. The barbecue board not so much but it's one of my passions and I've got a lot of followers that found me due to having that barbecue board there. They then jump to the other boards where I'm able to leverage the Pinterest marketing machine. So once again you've got to choose your phrasing here very carefully and choose things that people are going to search for. When you're looking for these names, one of the, the, the quick tips i found is that you can actually do two things. You can go up here, and if you go into this section here with the three bars, you can find things that are popular on Pinterest. So if you're having challenges finding out what type of board you want to use, you can get some great ideas in here. And these are things that are trending right now on Pinterest. The other thing you can do is this. If you were interested in, say, barbecues, like I just spoke about, you can type barbecue, and it's going to give you the trending topics down here, like barbecue ideas, barbecue recipes, barbecue sauce, barbecue chicken. So it can give you some ideas or concepts of what to call your boards or different boards you may want to use. So once again, I'm going to go back to my profile and boards. 
and spend the time to choose your names right. There's a new feature in the boards that's just come out. We're just starting to get some analytic information on it, but it's the ability to make subboards. So in the past, Pinterest, you might have a color palette board where you might have 3,000 different colors, all yellow, red, blue mixed in, all very nice graphics. You can now start to set up subsections in your board. So for example, I've now got this color palette board where I've got red color palettes, yellow, blue, green, and it's been very effective. And once again, as you go into these color boards, you also have one more time to actually set up your SEO terminology to reinforce the different things people are searching for. And it can become really powerful if you get your profile title, your, your main board title, your subboard titles, all quoting the same terminology. And then in the next step, we're going to talk about carrying that terminology forward into the pins themselves. It becomes a very powerful marketing tool. So once again, if you do use these subboards, take the time to pick the right name for those subtopics. So that's a very quick general overview of the Pinterest boards, but the terminology you use in your board names is very important. And just a bonus note here, always remember to put a, a picture into your board. So you, you can actually do that by going in here, hitting edit, and you can actually pick the cover picture you want to use. So make sure you always put a cover picture in there too. It's, it's a good part we're going to focus on now is the pins themselves. So if you actually go into the pin itself and you're actually going to say, I'm going to pin this onto one of my boards, you hit the save button. And what most people miss and is often forgot is they keep the old description down here that the previous person had put in. In a lot of cases it might be Jane Doe, oh don't you love this, try it out, I did it myself. And it, it's not relative information for people searching for a topic. So you always want to make sure you update this section. and. Typically, you would see me have something like this where I would have things that align with my board title. So I talk a lot where I'm a project manager about managing projects, project manager, home decor. So you see me carry those themes through all the different levels. But if you do not put it in the pins themselves, it, the whole process does not work. So this is a key and imperative step. The other thing to do uh, as you're doing this is before you save the pin, you've actually got to make sure you don't have a dead link or a spam link. So it's always a good idea to actually go into the pin and actually make sure the site you're, you're on goes through and actually connects to a trusted source. Because once again, as I spoke earlier, you don't want to be putting untrusted pins or pins with dead links out there. They really hurt your analytic uh, results. Interest, like most of the other social media channels, likes a lot of material coming onto their site and they reward that. So they're looking for you to be actively pinning on your boards every single day. And it's actually a large amount of pinning you need to drive up the volumes I've been talking to in this video. You have to be pinning constantly. And the way to do this is you wanna make sure you're hitting uh, on average somewhere between eight to 20 pins per board per day. And that volume has to go up as your daily impressions go up. Um, so one way to do this is uh, go in and do it yourself and some people are just active. They actually spend an hour every day on Pinterest and that just becomes part of your routine. But there are third party programs. One of the ones I, I, I've used it pretty successfully is called Tailwind. And what you can do is that you could spend a couple hours on a Saturday or Sunday pre-booking all of these pins that you validated. They are trusted. You've updated all of the text descriptions on them and then you can schedule them to go out into the future. And as you can see, I, I've used this program to actually schedule a large volume of pins many days into the future. And this is another key to success, is that repetition. Even taking a day off for two or three days in a row can really have a large negative impact on the amount of daily impressions you're getting. So this is a key step, is the repetition and be continually pinning to your boards and some of these uh, scheduling tools such as Tailwind can be a great help. If you're interested in looking in Tailwind, I've actually left a link in the comments section down below where you can actually go in and take a look at this tool. Uh, I'm not paid by them at all. It's actually a great tool and, and I swear by it saves me a huge amount of time. The Pinterest marketing framework relies heavily on trust factors and repetition. It is a long-term plan that can easily take a year or more to implement. So if you're looking for a drop shipping or pyramid scheme, this marketing framework is not for you. 
My Pinterest marketing framework does work, but it takes time and you need to commit to playing the long game. It took us well over a year to reach 500,000 monthly impressions and an additional four months after that to ramp up to well over a million monthly impressions. But those, those levels are now holding steady and we're able to leverage that awesome marketing power to draft traffic at our sites and at different locations. Uh, Pinterest may be the most undervalued marketing tool on the planet right now, and I have just shown you how to harness that power. But it does take work and dedication, and it takes time to build up your trust and authority rankings. You will find Pinterest to be your most valuable marketing tool in your arsenal if you stick to the plan and play the long-term game. In closing, if you're a marketer and you're not on Pinterest, then you're missing out on one of the biggest and most powerful marketing platforms on the planet. Pinterest has grown exponentially in popularity among mobile users, and it's now the second largest search engine that Google doesn't own. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, share, and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to see more great social marketing videos like this one, subscribe to our channel below, as we'll have a new video every week that deals with marketing topics in the social media age. This is Duncan Gillis from MaritimeVintage.com saying good night, stay safe, and watch out for those Cape Breton Mountain chickens. I can only dream of a Pinterest project that could.